Hello and welcome to ATP Report. It's the Katie and Barry Show. Katie Hopkins, all the way from the UK, has come to the United States to explain our political mess to us. <laughs> Hi, Katie. <laughs> I think that's a bit grand. <laughs> I'm a respectful outsider who's come in support of MAGA and decent ordinary Americans. And most of my time, Barry, I spend listening. Um, but yeah, these are crazy times, that's for certain. All right, so you were in DC and we've done a number of segments of you on the ground in DC and now you're in beautiful, sunny and get this, free Florida. It's not <laughs> locked down, it's not insane. What's it like in Florida? I'm telling you, what I want to do now is pick this up and spin it around and just show it like as if people haven't seen the sea before. But where I'm looking here, there's three people jogging. There's two people out on the jet ski. Uh, just on the balcony here, there's two gentlemen having like a picnic together. No masks anywhere. All restaurants and bars open. And a sense that this is a different, almost like a different world. It's like a different world. And the reason I came here isn't just because I like the beach, but because so many people are talking and asking me, where are we going to go, Katie? Where do we move to? And one of the answers you hear every time is Florida and house prices here gone through the roof. Well, it sounds like hell on earth. I mean, how could people make their own decisions about work and health and transportation and where to eat and what to do with their family? That seems like way too much responsibility to give to regular people. <laughs> Absolutely. And one of the great things about being somewhere where people are open and free is that it's much harder for the news media to scare these individuals because they're seeing for themselves that everything's fine. And that's where really the mask comes in. Masking and lockdown help scare people so they're more receptive to fear. Here, they're not receptive to fear. It's a subtlety, but I think it's very important. That's interesting because I've got to read you this quote from, well, our infamous AOC, she just did a very long Instagram post, Katie, where she said the Southern states, including Florida, are not red states, meaning supporters of the Republican party, but she calls them suppressed states that need to be liberated so America can heal. And she said, that's what we've got to do. We've got to organize. And she gives the example of Georgia, where, as she calls, a Black woman lead, led the way with multiracial and multicultural organizations. And that proves that Southern states are not red states. They are the suppressed states. So the only way our country will heal is to liberate these mm. states. So the working people can be liberated for economic, social, and racial oppression they've been suffering under. That Southern states are not red states. They are suppressed states, which means the only way that our country is going to heal is through the actual liberation of Southern states, the actual liberation of the poor, the actual liberation of working people from economic, social, and racial oppression. That's the only way. Um. How's the oppression in Florida going? Do you feel like you need to be liberated while you're there? <laughs> I tell you, Barry, there's a few ladies and gentlemen here who could do with being a bit less liberated. I've seen some sights. I'm telling you, I've seen some sights. Uh, it's so typical of AOC and the left, this weaponizing of language. The minute you hear something that sounds lovely and uh, you know, something you would aspire to, liberation, uh, you know, dreamers, any kind of language that sounds euphoric, you know they're up to something. So in the minute AOC is talking about liberation, you know that means flooding an area with uh, immigrants, flooding it with Democrat voters, and hollowing out a state from the cities, exactly as they've done in Minnesota. Uh, and I, I think you have to watch the language of these types, but I'm I'm looking forward to the squad asserting themselves because I hope it splits the Democrat party. Well, they're, they're very frustrated and they're yelling about the fact that, hey, we helped you win, Mr. Biden. 
when you're president, you better pull us into the cabinet. And wow, they've got some crazy ideas. Absolutely. And you can imagine them missing out on all of this airtime, missing out on the special seats or places of importance, meeting in rooms together, getting increasingly embittered. Something will have to give sometime soon and there will be a lot of enjoyment for our side watching that fallout happen. Well, let me, let's talk about some fallout. Um, I'm very concerned uh, about what I'm gonna read you because of its broader implications. Uh, the public broadcasting system in the United States is supported 100% by donations and largely by uh, the American government. And it's supposed to be an informational, nonpartisan, no bias broadcast system. Why? Because it's, it's owned by and run by the people uh, rather than a, a for-profit entity. Now, their lead counsel is a goofball named Michael Beller. Um, principal lawyer for them. And he got caught uh, by Project Veritas, which does fantastic work, um, on camera talking to an undercover journalist from Project Veritas about what would happen if the GOP wins. And the question he was asked, and we're going to show a little bit of that snippet in, in this segment, the reporter says, what are you going to do if we don't win? You're going to go to the White House and throw Molotov cocktails? And Beller shakes his head with a grin and says yes. And then get this. He says on camera, you ready? Donald Trump supporters and their children, even if Biden wins, we should go for all the voters and Homeland Security will take away their children and we will put them, I can't even say this and believe it's in America, we will put them in re-education camps. That's a quote. Here's the video. And when Biden wins, we go for all the Republican voters and Homeland Security will take the children. Okay. <laughs> and we'll put them into the education Amen. And these times, which are unique. I mean, Trump, Trump is close to him. What are we going to do if we don't let you? It doesn't Go to the White House and throw Molotov cocktails. And these kids who are growing up, knowing nothing but Trump, you know, for four years, you got to wonder what else they're going to be like. Are we raising a generation of intolerant, horrible you know, people, horrible kids? So, Katie, you've seen the video. What do you make of this imbecile? I mean, it's shocking, isn't it, when you hear them actually state this stuff and you know they mean it. It's, it isn't just a throwaway comment, they mean it. You know, in the same way that in order to silence me in the UK, my children are reported to social services. People come to my home to interview my children because people accuse me of abuse in the hope that they'll take my children from me. So it's not in a pie in the sky stuff, this is real stuff. And the other thing I should say, just in tribute to Veritas and James and the team, of course, when we see one of these videos, it's a video that's worked out, right? It's an investigation that's come to fruition. For every one that works out, statistically, what, 20, 30 operations don't, or they don't get what they need. And the teams are, I've met a number of their operatives, and it's the dedication is simply incredible. I mean, I, it's just, a, I just guess it's applause and plaudits and a, and a reminder of how much effort goes in to making this truth heard. And I think you and I, when we wonder, does the truth matter anymore? James O'Keefe and Veritas are proof that the truth still has massive impact when it's heard. Let me, let me ask you in a broader sense, Katie, if this goofball's comments were really disseminated widely, is there a group, a percentage, an estimation in your mind of the number of people that voted for Joe Biden that would say, yeah, let's go round up Barry's kids and Katie's kids and we're going to send them to camps and we're going to 
we're going to pattern those camps after the ones that Mao Zedong built in China so that by the time the kids come back, they will know the truth. Yeah, I absolutely think that level of hatred for our side exists on the left. There is a hatred for Trump supporters or conservatives, and that hatred knows no bounds. And I absolutely think people genuinely feel like this. I think you're letting him off lightly by calling him a goofball. I think, uh, you know, incredibly individual in an important and well-funded organization thinks this way and many others do too. He's their lawyer. He's not the guy that answers the phone and cleans out the trash bins. He's their lawyer and talks like this. I can't even imagine what the rank and file at PBS must be thinking. And if they have support from any rational American citizen who has any clue what's in the Constitution, my God, they ought to burn the building down. Yeah, you're not wrong, Barry. It's a, it's a sign of the times, but still that's the darkness and uh, we're on the side of the light. And uh, whatever goes on, I will always come back to us. We're the good guys and that's a very good thing. Yeah, we need to get some white hats to remind ourselves it's going to be okay someday because it's pretty sad right now, you know. Thanks, Katie, for joining us all the way from beautiful Florida. I'm glad you've escaped from Washington, D.C. Thank, thank you. you out there uh, in ATP land for watching and supporting us today. Please go to our website, americantruthproject.org, and sign up to get all of our content for free. You'll also get a few chapters of my new book, Because You Asked, also for free. Or you can sign up on your cell phone. Just text the word truth, send it to 88202, push send. You'll get all of our stuff absolutely for free right on your phone. For Katie, I'm Barry. Thanks so much.